First question, state championship game Friday, oh, 7 yeah. p.m., Page, yeah. Knoxville West. Re little re little revenge game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> son's right. looking forward to it, so it should be should be fun. I'm heading out right after practice, so right. yeah. Good luck. Oh, yeah. Good well, hopefully I don't run into all that traffic. That's, yeah. that's going to be the bad part. Have you been to town now? Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it, 24, ooh, yeah. Uh, it's not going to be good. <sighs> I'm not a patient guy either, so it'll be interesting. Ways, baby. There you go. That's the only way to go through yep. uh, into Chattanooga at all. Okay. All right. Uh, Craig, the, the month that Ryan just did, you know, his gross punting average, I mean, best November in NFL history and tied for the fifth best single month gross average, and, and 12 of those 18 punts were inside the 20. I mean, is it fine? Is it getting tougher to find areas for him to improve now? Uh, I mean, obviously we're very happy with Ryan and what he's doing right now, but I think there's always ways for him to improve. Um, and I think that's one of the best things about him. Uh, he's always out there looking to improve. And I know, you know, probably one of the things that we're going to continue to harp on with him uh, is those plus 50 punts. And I know last week we had, I think, five out of his seven punts were inside the 12 yard line. But all Ryan talks about is his last punt where he got a touchback. Um, so, you know, that's just his mindset and uh, he's always willing to get better and always willing to learn. So uh, obviously looking forward to, to going out here today and, and helping him out. Um, but obviously we're excited about him and he's doing a really good job for us. I know Mike was, I guess on Monday was complimentary, I guess the special teams as a whole, I guess the, you know, kind of that was the standard on Sunday, maybe even in coverage as well. How'd you, how'd you like it from across the board? Yeah, I think our guys are getting better. Um, you know, the younger guys are stepping up. I think Colton Dow had a really good game. It was really uh, fun to watch him go out there and, and make a tackle in space. And, um, you know, Braves does a really good job of, you know, when we do make plays on special teams, he shows our whole team how excited the defense gets, how excited the offense gets. And, you know, it just sets a standard out there um, and sets the tone. And we talk about sending messages all the time, whether it's our kickoff coverage unit or our punt team. Um, you know, it gets our guys going. So I, th I thought our guys did a really good job on the return unit. Uh, we've got to cut back down on penalties. And I know we had one, uh, but we lost 20 yards of field position on it. And, and I thought it was blocked really well. We just, we got to do the little thing to continue to help our team win. With a guy like Dow, who's never really played special teams, and obviously he's been an offensive player most of his life, what's what's the trick to getting him to buy into being a defensive type of guy going down and, and working on things like making tackles? Sure. Uh, I think we, we do a really good job early on of trying to talk to these young guys about having a role on special teams. Um, they're used to playing offense, they're used to playing defense and playing a lot in college. Uh, but in order for them to make an impact, usually early on in their career, it's going to have to be on special teams. So it's us getting with them early on. Um, Coach Rabel sets the tone with those guys um, as far as them understanding their role. And then it's just our job to continue to try to work with these guys and develop them. Um, when they do well on special teams, they might get more of an opportunity on offense or defense. So uh, we really enjoy working with these young guys and especially um, them seeing the confidence that they build on special teams and hopefully it ends up helping them on uh, another unit too. What was I guess the communication like on the end of play sequence where you got the spike and got the field goal unit out there? Is that a situation where you obviously know could be needed in a hurry and, and that that's how they got out there and got it done? Yeah, the communication uh, whether it's Coach Rabel or Tim, myself, um, <clears throat> You know, when we figure out that ball, you know, there's an opportunity for us to, uh, you know, still score points. So uh, that that gets set early on right away. Um, and it's stuff that we work on constantly. You, you hear Coach Vrabel, whether it's down, down clock or down, down timeout, certain things like that, that we end up doing situational wise. Um, but right at the jump, you know, Coach Vrabel will be talking like, hey, listen, we either got no timeouts or one timeout left. Let's get everyone ready. So it's my job to go and talk to the kicker, the punter and the snapper. Hey, listen, we got certain timeouts where we have no timeouts. We've got to be ready for certain situations like this. And obviously our offense did a great job of getting us in field goal range and Nick was able to put it through. 
situations? Is Nick communicating, hey, I want the offense to try and get the ball to a certain spot or a certain side of the field, or is he kind of beggars can't be choosers, I'll go out and yeah. kick it? it? That's the greatest thing about Nick. He really doesn't care what hash it's on. Um, you know, some kickers will want right hash or left hash. Some of them, you know, it's going to depend on the win situation like that where uh, they'll ask. Uh, Nick's just a gamer where he's like, hey, listen, doesn't matter. I'll kick it, um, which is great for an offensive coach, too, because he doesn't have to worry about a certain hash to go on. But again, there's different situations where we could uh, need it on a hash because of the weather and things like that. So, um, you know, Nick, Nick just does a really good job. And I'm, I was just happy for him to make it and having a situation that we practice all the time, um, you know, that we do in practice, then it shows up in the game and we end up executing it. You know, um, it depends a lot of variables inside, outside, when he put that one through from 53. What's the longest you've seen him make since he's been here? Oh, so we, we try to get back. Um, we don't want to overkick Nick, um, but, you know, I've seen him make 58 yard kicks for us. I've seen him make 57. Um, you know, we don't try to really go back really too far in practice because, um, not really necessarily his age, but there's really no need for him to do one in practice from 60 some yards where he's just trying to go and kill the ball and maybe get hurt. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll practice a little longer field goals in certain situations and they sure love it when they have the wind behind them too, um, when we do kick really long ones. Well, some of the new guys in the personnel department, like Grant, AR, you know, Chad, when they first got here, like they said they made an effort to get coaches tape from you for special yeah. teams. Well, what was that process like? Is that something that you unique to your experience? Uh, I wouldn't say unique, but it's it's great when they're they're going to ask, um, you know, for an opinion on certain guys. Uh, I've been blessed. Uh, a lot of places that I've been where the GM or the assistant GM or personnel people will come and ask for my opinion on certain things, uh, which is great because you know you're giving them some feedback and they want to learn, they want to listen. Um, they might have a different Different opinion about a certain player, but that's what's great. We can sit down with, you know, Ran or A Rob or Chad, and we can talk about certain guys. Um, but it was it was a good process going on um, that we had in the spring, and it was it was fun to do. Were there any particular guys that like, were the fruit of those conversations, like maybe Gifford or? or oh or yeah, I mean, we we knew about Luke, and uh, obviously he was a big get, and we, we like how Luke's playing right now these past couple games. Um, yeah, so. You know, Luke was a part, Colton Dow, you know, a guy that uh, played a little bit on uh, special teams in college. Um, you know, so we, we understood that there's some guys that could end up helping us. Members, uh, you seem to have much better games when you get to go against a divisional opponent the second time around <laughs> in a season. Uh, it, 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 is it just having seen them again, motivation, uh, maybe be able to fix a few things that didn't maybe work right in the first game or you just run better later in the year you know not too bad these not too good these first these first two divisional games but um yeah i think you just you watch the film um you make corrections seeing um the things that you know we need to do better as an offense and individually and then try to correct them throughout the week and then just go out there and, and play your game and be, and be better than the, uh, the one before. You had 43 yards, I think, uh, in Indy in the last <laughs> game. Does, does that maybe make you want to go out and try to, you know, in the frame of the offense, have a better game on this Sunday? Yeah, definitely. Uh, 43 yards makes you want to cringe. Um, yeah, I have to be better. I have to play better. And, um, you know, that's going to be my, my main focus um, this, this whole week is just playing better and um, being efficient in the run game productive day on Sunday, 71 yards, a couple of scores. When you watch tape back, what, how do you feel like things went? And I guess you're always a perfectionist. You, did you see things that you could have even done better on Sunday? Let's just say I could have had a lot more. Yeah. I feel like I could have had a lot more, yeah, so. I'm not too happy about it. When, when you see that. Yeah, um, you know, just, uh, uh, just, just watching it, um, learning from it, it's tough, you know. Um, when it was ops, and you know, we didn't take when I didn't take advantage of them, but um, um, just, just, just growing from it, and then just try when the next game comes, take advantage of those opportunities um, when they're presented. How much do you talk with the offensive line during the week, especially as they've had so many moving parts? 
Yeah, we all just try to communicate all throughout the week. Um, you know, I told them on, uh, on 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 yesterday. You know, I you know didn't take advantage of opportunities that were in front of me. Um, you know, I felt like they did a, a great job giving me opportunities. Um, you know, I got to be better, and let's just uh, keep on building. Derek, you expressed that Sunday kind of your gratitude for having the career to get to 9,000. You got to 17 other touchdowns. This. How much are you able to appreciate what you've done and what you are doing while in the middle of doing it? Well, I mean, I I, I, I didn't even know the list or um, I knew the 9,000 was coming up. But I think just us just being focused on winning, you know, you get you kind of let that, you know, swing by a little bit and not really, not really think about it because we've just been focused on, you know, playing better and um, focus on one game at a week, one one game a week at a time and um, and winning. But, um, you know, I, I think that's it's cool. Um, you know, it's, it's surreal for me to be on the list with the, the names I'm on and, um, you know, very thankful. But I um, still got work to do, so still focus on that. Given where you stand, and you talked openly about growing up, wanting to be in the NFL, wanting to play at this level, given where you stand now, what drives you week in and week out to hit the next milestone or the next thing? Um, well, last week I feel like I could have played better, so that had driven me. The week before it had driven me too, and the week before that had driven me. So um, I got a lot of reasons. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm just, just ready to go to work, ready to play better, and ready to be better for this team play better is kind of the overall caveat. What's the challenge in trying to get better, let's say, from your end on the screen game when you guys try to execute screen passes? Yeah, I think that's just um, uh, just paying attention to the details, um, to be able to make the screen work, um, being able to sell the screen and um, do the things that you need to do to be able to have open field whenever, whenever you catch it. So it's, it's all tied in together. And um, you know, um, we've had some uh, some good plays off the screens, and hopefully, we get an opportunity this week. Jeffrey Simmons has said how winning kind of cures everything, and how it's a different vibe in, in the building after a win. For you, what you've seen, how much different is it after the win, and how much do you have to be careful not to, you know, be like that fat alligator that you know what I mean? That, that's really vulnerable. Yeah, I mean, you know, win, win is definitely contagious. Um, you know, we. All, all love to win, um, but I think we definitely know that um, you know we could have played better uh, last Sunday, and you know we just hungry for more, and um, um, and ready to be better on all three phases. And I think that's just the focus is just keep growing, keep on improving, so those wins can keep on happening. Derek, what stand up stands out to you the most about maybe the way this Colts defensive front is playing? Robert Stewart played the last time. Uh, he's, he's not going to be available this time, but, but just overall, they seem to have like a lot of splash plays recently. What has kind of jumped out to you about them? And yeah, I just think um, these guys have been playing together for a while. They have really good chemistry. Um, I think they have the guys that run the scheme very well, and they they execute, and um, they're they're around the ball. And um, you know, you got leaders over there that do the, do things the right way. Um, guys are all locked in, and they're all tied in together, and they and they play very well. Last week, first two plays, they had you split out wide in an empty set, and then lobbying Tim for a, a go route or a deep post. Um, I was kind of lost out there. I ain't, I ain't lined up wide in, in the beginning of the game, and uh, I don't think ever. But um, no, it's just fun, just giving defenses a, a different look, and then coming out with something different. Challenge your inner, inner Randy Moss. Hopefully, one day they might throw it up to me, let me go up and get it. But um, we'll, we'll have to see. We talk every year about the success you have. December at the end of the season. Is that something that you kind of like the, the cold weather or Alabama, Florida, all that stuff? Did you kind of still never get used to it? I guess I'm just, I, I love December because um, Christmas is my favorite holiday. So I guess I'm just just running to get to Christmas to the 25th. But no, um, I don't know. Hopefully it, it, it keeps going. Um, you know, it gets cold uh, around, around these times. And, um, you know, I just, you know, want to finish strong at the end of the year, no matter the weather conditions, no matter what's going on, my mind is just my mind says just finishing strong. So, Andre was mic'd up on uh, on Sunday. Maybe told you to run behind him on a certain play. Hey, tell me he was mic'd up. I gotta get on him about that too. I'm glad you said that. I gotta say something to him yeah. about that. Did you, do you remember that kind of uh, conversation with him? And how's he been as far as the willingness to, to block for you and and maybe letting you know when he 
deserves some credit for it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He was he, he was talking about it, and um, we actually ran a play, and it happened. You know, what, the same way he he was talking about. So um, um, he was trying to coach me up during the game and tell me, you know, what, what was going to be open. And I just told him, I said, you 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 was right on that one. You know, um, he always tried to give me tips throughout the game. So you know, credit goes to him, but I'm gonna still get on him about not letting me know he was mic'd up during the game. That's a pretty big crime for a guy not to tell everybody a big he's one. mic'd up, right? A big one. A, a, a really big one. So as soon as I go in there, I'm gonna get on get get on to him about that. So. Did he make some kind of deal with the the mic people? <laughs> if he did, that's another crime. They ain't not letting nobody know. So. You, you let people know when you're mic'd up. Oh yeah, I gotta say something. Yeah. I gotta say something because I I was mic'd up a couple of years ago and totally forgot. So I'm definitely gonna let them know. I kind of messed up one time last year. I didn't let uh, Tony know, but it was, it was all all the fun and games. But you know, whenever you got the mic, you gotta let let everybody know you hot. So nothing crazy is said. <laughs> I got one. We got one more for you. I guess you started your foundation. What's been what four or five years ago now? Mm -hmm. uh, I know. This, I know. This is my calls. My cleats week. How's how's that kind of gone in your mind as far as being able to help others? How how important is it? You know, for the two all foundation. Yeah, um, mine is focuses on the youth, uh, helping out the youth, being um, a, a resource for them, um, trying to brighten their day in any way possible, especially during the holiday season, going back to school and just um, get my hands in the community with my foundation um, in, in any way I can. So, you know, just trying to brighten somebody's day and um, um, be a blessing to somebody in any way possible. And um, the 2R Foundation, that's what it's all about, is loving the playing field for the youth and also helping out anybody in the community as well. Thanks, Derek. Thanks, Derek. Thank you, Derek. Derek out there maybe again a couple more times to see if anyone bites, uh, maybe cast the lure and, and, and think about maybe throwing along to him sometime? Yeah, I mean, He's he's big, he's strong, he's fast. You know what I mean, and and got to do things that are that are going to be able to keep him honest. So um, he's got a cool skill set. and We just got to keep fi figuring out how you know what different ways can we can, can we use that. When you open empty like that uh, yeah. on the two plays, but then go kind of right back to a more standard offense. Uh -huh. you know, what what's the thinking there? Like when you opened empty like that, a lot of us thought, "Oh, they're going to do something different this yeah. whole drive here and kind of surprise." Yeah, some of that. I mean, it's hard. Obviously, like uh, Will does a great job finding Hop on that first play. Um, it was base defense versus eleven personnel, so uh, you're kind of limited in what you can do there. Um, but he made a great play, and then. Uh, Tried to put ourselves in another situation there to be able to go and stay on the ball and kind of trap that personnel grouping and um, got pressured and had to throw an incomplete pass and now you're second and ten and it's hard to kind of stay in rhythm when when you're in that because it change it just changes everything so um, thought process changed with the down and distance and then we just uh, um, you know went went with uh, the next best play that we thought. Traylon is still early in the week but good to get Traylon back at practice I imagine yesterday and and maybe. What's your message to him as he kind of finds his way, you know, back into the, <clears throat> Yeah, keep working. Keep working to, uh, you know, pick up where, where he left off. He was doing some, some things for us in terms of being able to win downfield, um, being able to stretch the defense. You know, the big thing that we talked to him about is, is you're big and strong and fast. You need to play big and strong and fast. So uh, being able to com uh, consistently do that. Um, and, and it's going to be a good opportunity for him to come up and, and start to uh, uh, continue to, to, to grow and continue to improve. Are put in and call mm -hmm. about how much of the time does the first read on that play work and, and get the football? Hopefully, a lot versus how much versus having to survey and go to a second. Or yeah, read. Uh, I think it all depends on on um, on who you're playing. Uh, what the coverage is and things along those lines. So, um, you know, it's 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 part about playing quarterback at this level is being able to not just lock on to one player and being able to, to progress if, if need be for whatever reason, whether it's a different coverage than we anticipated, whether a matchup didn't win, whether someone's getting doubled. So there's a variety of reasons as to why the progressions are necessary and, and it just, uh, I guess, by play, by, by opponent. Do you ever Tim. go through in the, in the process of reviewing that sort of stuff and maybe change what the first read is when you practice or is it, or is it said something? I mean, for the most part, the, the, the plays are, are typically read, you know, Consistently, so the quarterbacks have an idea as to um, you know what the issues are in certain plays, where they want to go versus certain looks, um, and and so you know especially with plays that that you run a lot of, uh, you want them to be able to go ahead and, and be able to handle unscouted looks, something that may come up. Um, you know when when you're consistent and in, in how you read certain things. 
um, you're able to handle issues that, that maybe, you know, you're not, you're not really expecting whether again, it's a, it's a different coverage or something happens and, and you're able to stay in phase with your feet and your eyes and you're able to stay on time as opposed to trying to chase a read. When you watch film against their defense, what about Zaire Franklin makes him so special? He, he, it's a heat seeking missile. Uh, I mean, he runs and he hits, he's as physical as a linebacker in terms of his ability to, uh, explode and deliver on contact. He's a he's very active. He plays fast. Um, you, you see the instincts. He's he's playing at a very high level. Um, and, and and when you talk about a, a linebacker's ability to run and hit, I mean it's as it's it's as good as uh, uh, as I've seen right now. Tim, when you look at this Colts defense overall, what maybe growth or, or differences do you see in that unit from when, when you guys last played? Yeah, 90's not in there. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, 53's not in there, so those are two two big pieces for him. But again, you, you take a look, 44 and 45 are both playing at a high level. They're, they're playing well. They're both physical linebackers. You know, uh, uh, Buckner's still inside, still disruptive. Obviously, Quiddy Pay will be back, or we're expecting him to be to you know see him on Sunday. You know, he's got some juice on the edge. Uh, they're they're playing fast uh, up front. They they've got a disruptive, penetrating front, um, and and they're good on the back end. Those linebackers are, are all over the field, um, and and you know they've got guys that are that are there and, and making plays. Kenny Moore's a, a really really good player. Um, you know, he's really instinctive. Uh, he's a good blitzer. Um, you know, he finds the football, and that's the thing I would say that, that you notice when, when watching them is they've been very opportunistic, and, and they do a really good job of attacking the football. So uh, in order for us to, to, to have success on Sunday, we got to do a good job making sure, first and foremost, that we're protecting the ball. Going back to the Carolina game, were there anything, was there anything in particular that was happening in that second half to keep you guys from being able to find the end zone? Yeah, I mean, we got to do a what, I mean, what were we, two for 12 on third down? Right, that's unacceptable. So we have to do a much better job there to uh, be able to, to keep drives going um, and be able to capitalize on some of the momentum. I thought we were able to start some of the drives off with some good plays. Uh, you know, whether it was the the ball to Hop, whether it was the ball to Chris, um, where where you know we were able to go ahead and get a chunk, and then we just weren't able to kind of capitalize on that momentum. So we got to do a better job. Um, on third down uh, in, in making sure that we're in a, a position to, to extend drives to be able to make sure that we're able to get to the different calls that we have on our call sheet. Derek moved up a couple different charts on Sunday. Sure. Yeah. How much does his consistency and durability impress you? And he just told us the thing that drives him each week is to be better than what he did the last week. How much does that mentality help as well? It, it, it helps a lot. Obviously, for a player that's had as much success as Derek has, uh, you love that that drive, that hunger, um, to be able to come and, and, and attack each week, trying to uh, improve in, in whatever area uh, we need him to improve in. Um, he, he, I mean, he's a machine in terms of how he takes care of his body, um, how he prepares. Um, in the off season, how he prepares in season, in in you know just just the the, the amount of detail and, and the amount of thought that that goes into making sure that that he's primed and ready to go for Sunday. So uh, again, that that that's a testament to him, his work ethic, um, and, and and everything he puts in uh, to you know being a, a great a great football player for us, both in and outside the building. I guess Shane or maybe players motivated by just maybe putting in the tape of the first Colts game as far as run defense goes. Yeah, I mean, we went through it. We watched it uh, yesterday when we got them in here. Um, a lot of things need to be cleaned up. So I think they're excited for the opportunity. It's going to be a big challenge for us. Just They're playing really well up front right now. Backs doing a good job. Um, they're all on the same page. The offense, they're efficient. They're scoring a lot of points. So it's going to be a big challenge for us. I think our guys are excited for it. Guys said things were simplified last weekend. I guess why maybe just that game have we seen more simplified, you know, play up front, and how did they kind of continue that? Yeah, I think a lot of that is just making sure we're uh, we're locked in on the on the little things, the details, not overwhelming them too much, um, them not overwhelming themselves too much with with different things, making sure we're locked in, the, getting back to being able to play with some speed. Right, play with some speed, not paralyze ourselves pre-snap, overanalyzing, overthinking things. Get lined up, and we got to go play. We got to react, um, and hopefully, we can make some plays out of it just based on the speed of the game. So, um, I mean, I think the guys bought into the message that Vrabe showed them, um, and that's going to be a big thing this week. We got to make sure we're we're all on our p's and q's. It's going to take all eleven every play. 
How much did pass rush game like you did last game? Obviously, they've struggled up front. They had some injuries too. But how, how do you evaluate that when you have like a guy like Arden emerging again? Yeah, it was good to see that. So. Uh, I mean, we'll see. He's he's out here working this week, and we'll see where it goes this weekend, right? Come Sunday. But um, I was pleased with what those guys did. They took advantage of their opportunities. That was a, a big thing going into the week. Take advantage of our opportunities, no matter what it is. A chance to celebrate, don't miss the opportunity to celebrate. A chance to pick a teammate up, don't miss an opportunity to encourage and pick up a teammate. A chance to make a play. When your play is there to be made, make it, right? So that's hopefully that can continue, and these guys can keep buying into that. Discuss it all. To discuss it all in the course of that. Hey, this was a third string left tackle and the other uh, left guard and the other guard was starting his second career game. And what you see this week is 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 different. So we got to raise raise the the game to keep up the production. Yeah, we were aware. I mean, going into the game, kind of where they were last week in terms of O line, and then as the injuries unfolded, uh, kind of where they had to go and. I mean, I, our guys know what this team is that we're facing. Like, we played them a lot over the years. There's a lot of similar faces, especially up front for them. Um, it's always been a battle, physical game, always. Um, so our guys have an idea of what this is going to take and what we're going to have to do up front, especially in order for us to find some success this week. How much did Murphy Bunnings return kind of help stabilize the back end and get everybody back in their normal position? Yeah, it was good to get them out there. Um, I think Roger continues to do a lot of good things for us inside, um, so it allows us some versatility there with him. And it was good to get Sean out there. I think he's he's a calming force a little bit out there um, just because he's played a little bit of ball and he's more of a veteran presence out there for us. So um, hopefully that continues. and. As we got to keep shuffling pieces, we'll shuffle them as needed based on where the season goes and the injuries and everything else. How do you evaluate a guy like, like Minshew? Sometimes it just seems like he is on, and other times there are decisions that you wonder. Like when you're looking at the, how do you force him into those decisions? That you yeah, I mean, I think he's, uh, he's, he's really comfortable in the system. Um, I think the familiarity coming from Philly uh, to be there, it's, it's a really good scheme. Um, they do a lot of things. He's, Progression wise, he's good. He knows where to go with the ball. Um, the RPO stuff, he's been really good at seeing all that. Um, and the big thing that's showing up is just, and it's always been this way with him, is the off schedule plays, right? The ability to escape, the ability to duck, dodge, all that stuff, right? From dang dodgeball, right? It's the same premise. Um, but he finds ways to be elusive in the pocket and get out. And that's when he tries to make those plays, right? He makes those plays, and sometimes they're good plays, sometimes they're not so good, right? So we're going to have to continue to challenge, hopefully be tight enough and where we can cover and rush and coordinate all that stuff together. And we're going to have to do a great job trying to keep him in the pocket and making sure we plaster like we did last week against Young when he got out on us a few times better in the red zone than it was the last time you played. What you just described, is that more or less the, the difference than, than before, or what is the difference? Yeah, I mean, they're doing a good job running the ball. They got some size, um, some playmakers down there on the perimeter. I think the RPO stuff shows up just the same. Um, they're really efficient. Like, you don't see a lot of negative plays down there from them. They're, they're efficient. They stay on schedule. Um, when you're not able to get guys behind the sticks and they, they got the whole playbook at their arsenal, right? And then Minshew, he adds the element down there. Down there, you see him keep the ball, he runs, he's got some rushing TDs, so that's another added element we got to be able to defend. When you're going against you know, vertical guys like you know, Alec Pierce, Pittman, what do you tell the, the DBs? Because we, we know how they consistently get called for interference, et cetera. What do you tell them? going against jump ball guys like that. Yeah, we got to be good. We got to make sure we're finding the football, right? As we get down the field, hopefully we're connected and we're in phase. And at that point, we can find the football. If we get beat and we're caught behind, it, they're in such a catch-up mode at that point where it gets hard to try to locate the football. So if we can stay connected, understand what we're going to see as the game kind of progresses, what they showed us the first game, then we got to make sure as we're hip to hip, running, whatever, hand fighting as it goes, we got to make sure we get our head around because that's what the refs are looking for. If your head's not turned around and they're coming back for the ball, you're going to get called every single time. If your head gets turned around and you're trying to find the football, the refs give you a little bit more leniency there. Jane, how much did their big plays hurt you the first time around and how important is it to make them drive the full field? Yeah, I mean, shoot, they had uh, five runs for 105. I think they had four passes for 114 and additional two DPIs for an additional 38, right? So you're talking nine, nine to 10 plays there that changed the game, 
right? And some of those were showing up on third down, whether it's third and short, third and long. Um, so we got to make sure we do a good job keeping it in front of us. Sorry. We can handle it. Make, make, yeah, yeah, cut that one out. Make them drive the field, right? Um, as always, make them earn it. Um, make them earn it. Don't give them anything cheap. Don't give them any fast scores. A couple more going. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> it slipped out. <laughs> Talking about X place. <laughs> oh, good.